Hey guys, I have an interesting little board here to show you. It's the RCWL-0516 motion sensing board. And it's pretty unique how it works. It uses microwave RF energy to detect motion. What happens is it sends out a roughly 3.2 gigahertz signal and that'll go reflect off of several objects and come back here. Now if anything is moving there'll be a signal that comes back that's not a, not quite at the same frequency and this somehow detects that and it causes a slight voltage difference that you know goes on to this chip and is processed and it will turn the output on when it detects motion and it's pretty neat how it works just using one transistor as the transmitter and receiver and a few other resistors and capacitors. Now the IC part number is RCWL-9196 and from what I can gather it's quite similar to the BISS0001 that's used in the infrared motion detectors. I'll put in some close-up shots of this board as well. I bought these off of eBay from seller Coco Park 800. They're only 99 cents a piece. Free shipping, so I bought a couple of them. Amazing price for what it is. It does take you know, about a month coming from China. And I measured the quiescent current or the idle current at a supply voltage of 4.5 volts was 2.5 milliamps. The uh, infrared type sensors were in the microamp range, so I guess because of the RF circuit it, this thing has, it requires more current. So it may not be ideal for long-term battery use. And some information I found about it, um, somebody used a spectrum analyzer that could handle very high frequencies, and it transmits at roughly 3.2 gigahertz. These boards come from China in little baggies. They don't include any instructions, so I had to figure out what these pins were because they're just labeled CDS, VN, Out, Ground, and 3V3. And, well, most of them are pretty obvious. They're, this one here is, wasn't quite obvious. Did it require a 3.3 volt input? So I googled the part number here and it pulls up information and it turns out this is a 3.3 volt regulated output I don't know how many milliamps it's probably just a few milliamps and you know I'm not going to use that for anything also has a output for a CDS light sensor it has a space here for the sensor which is not populated but you could add a light sensor and I guess that changes the function from day to night, how it senses. I don't know exactly what it does, but yeah, I'm not worried about it because I'm not going to use that function. So really the only pins to worry about are the three center pins. And this is just ground. This is the output. And this is the supply voltage. And you can supply it with from 4 to 28 volts so it doesn't require any regulated voltage or anything for the in the uh, supply voltage okay so now that I know what's going on here with the pins I'll solder on some wires and hook up an LED and we'll go from there the simplest circuit I use to test this thing out is just connecting an LED from output to ground and of course giving it a supply voltage the output is current limited. It's very low current, like one milliamp. So using a high brightness, I could see this working when the LED turned on when there was motion. However, for this video, I need a brighter LED solution. So I just connected a transistor to the output, emitter to ground, 
you do not need a base resistor because the output already is current limited. And from the supply voltage side, I connected a 10 ohm resistor and a chip on board type LED. I used 9 volts because the LED is 9 volts and one to limit the current. So that's why I use this arrangement here. Okay, I have it set up on the breadboard here. Ignore all this other stuff. The circuit is right here. Here's the board, transistor, the 10 ohm resistor, the chip on board LED, and 9 volt battery supply. So how this thing works is when you first power it up, the output goes high for a few seconds, so the LED will come on. Then it goes out, and it acts dead for a few seconds. And then a few seconds later, it starts detecting. So if you try one of these out, don't be discouraged. Just give it a few seconds to boot up. So now I'll power this thing up. The LED comes on, goes off, doesn't respond to my motions, so we'll wait a little bit. Okay, now it's responding to my motions. Okay, I'll back off. I'm about a meter back now. And as I move my hand, it detects me. Move over here, detects me. So it's yeah, it's acting just like the passive infrared sensor, except it's using RF signals. Okay, I put it outside on the back porch, and it senses me through the window. There's two layers of glass. There's a storm window as well. The PIR sensors do not detect through glass. But this thing is detecting me because it's using RF. And as I step back, yeah, there it got me. Okay, I'll bring this thing in and do some more checks with it. I'm upstairs in my semi finished attic area. I did notice having the board vertical like this seem to help it with the range. Of course we're dealing with RF so the metal base of this thing can have some effect on it. So we'll see how this detects as I step back. About three meters away from it now. If I step back more it detects me. Step back more, it detects me. Step back, now it's not detecting me. Let's see what happens if I set the camera up and move into this closet area over here. There's storage in here. And I move around. Oh look! Look who's gonna screw up my test. The little kitty. I think the cat's small. It doesn't really detect him. Let me set the camera up here on a shelf. Okay, I'm in the closet now. We'll see if this thing detects me by so moving around in the closet. Oh, we got a cat. It could be detecting the cat. Come here, Snickers. Come here. It's not really detecting him. Yeah, it's detecting me in the closet. So it is working through the walls here of the closet. This thing 
gets a thumbs up a ducks guts awards from me this thing is cool i'm pretty thrilled with this thing strongly recommend it thanks for watching